Hello and welcome to the news from Bahrain International. I am Hamad Youssef. The representative of His Majesty the King for Humanitarian Work and Youth Affairs, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, received the President of Serbia, Alexander Vucic, in the presence of the first Deputy Chairman of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports, His Highness Sheikh Khalid bin Hamad Al Khalifa. His Highness Sheikh Nasser affirmed the importance of growing relations between the two countries and the promising fields of cooperation in many fields, following the vision and aspirations of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa. His Highness briefed the Serbian President on the heritage and traditions that the Kingdom is most famous for and affirmed the importance of preserving such heritage over the generations in order to maintain the rich history of the kingdom. The Serbian president praised the rich history and heritage of Bahrain and expressed aspirations to enhance the bilateral cooperation in many fields. His Highness Sheikh Nasser then held a dinner banquet in honor of the president and his accompanying delegation. The National Security Advisor and Royal Guard Commander, Major General His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, received the Royal Guard members who will participate in reaching the top of Mount Everest in the presence of the Royal Guard Special Force Commander, Lieutenant Colonel His Highness Sheikh Khalid bin Hamad Al Khalifa. His Highness Sheikh Nasser was briefed on the preparations of the Royal Guard members prior to their participation, where he expressed appreciation for their efforts in achieving the goal. He expressed confidence in the people of Bahrain's ability to overcome challenges, which was evident through the Royal Guard teams facing hardship during the past period amid harsh weather conditions and rough mountain paths. His Highness stated that this step will be important for the Royal Guard members, affirming his confidence in their abilities to reach the summit and make a new achievements. His Highness wished them success in carrying out the task. The first Deputy President of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports and President of Bahrain Olympic Committee, His Highness Sheikh Khalid bin Hamad Al Khalifa, expressed pleasure in hosting the World's Strongest Man Championship in Bahrain. His Highness noted that Bahrain has become an optimal destination for hosting and organizing various championships for its logistic potentialities and high youth energy. He hailed the success of the Strength Week, affirming that this success was a result of the support of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa to exert further efforts to achieve the goals of the initiatives. He commended His Majesty support to sports and athletes, which is evident through the honorable achievements made in various participations. His Highness praised the efforts of the representative of His Majesty the King for Humanitarian Work and Youth Affairs and President of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, to develop the sports movements in Bahrain by implementing the directives of His Majesty the King. He noted that the remarkable organization of the Strength Week affirms the professional work of the organizing committee. He added that the committee has managed to follow precautionary and preventive measures to protect the organizers and participants from COVID-19, which proved their competency in working in all circumstances. He congratulated the top winners of the championship, wishing the other participants better luck in the upcoming events. The Shura Council held its weekly session remotely, presided over by its chairman Ali Saleh. The council discussed the reports of the Financial and Economic Affairs Committee on issuing development bonds and the reports of the com Committee on Foreign Affairs, Defense and National Security regarding a draft law ratifying the air services agreement between Bahrain and Italy. The meeting then approved the recommendation of the Public Utilities and Environment Committee on issuing a draft law on issuing a marine law. 
The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Dr. Abdel Latif Barrashid Zayani, held a discussion session with the Deputy Prime Minister of Serbia, Prince Salav Nedimovic, as part of the official visit of the Serbian President Alexander Vucic to Bahrain. The two sides reviewed the distinguished course of friendly relations and its development on all levels, emphasizing the importance of developing joint coordination mechanisms to serve the interests of the two friendly countries and people. They also signed an MOU on political consultation in a step that reflects the constant efforts of the two friendly countries to promote their relations and further develop them. The Minister of Foreign Affairs praised the results of the official visit and the discussions convened by His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa with the President at Libya Palace, which reflects the solid relations between the two countries. The Minister said that His Majesty the King expressed his delight with the visit of the President, stressing the good relations between the two countries and the importance of promoting cooperation between Bahrain and Serbia and confronting the coronavirus pandemic as well as various areas of economy, commerce and investment. He added that the two sides also emphasized on the need to exchange visits between senior officials and discuss combating terrorism and ways to collaborate in this area. The Foreign Affairs Minister also highlighted the directives of His Majesty the King and the President of Serbia to conclude a memorandum of understanding between the foreign ministries of the two countries to provide the appropriate mechanism for political talks. He also stated that His Majesty issued an order to establish an embassy of Bahrain to Serbia and the President of Serbia issued an order to establish a Serbian embassy in Bahrain. The Deputy Prime Minister of Serbia said that this is an important occasion for both countries following the signing of the MOU on political cooperation, adding that this was the first such document that was signed since 1989. The Serbian Deputy Premier highlighted that both Bahrain and Serbia are not large countries, but they are independent countries striving towards economic prosperity. He said both countries have plenty to gain with vast possibilities for cooperation, for instance exporting food for, from Serbia to Bahrain and vice versa. He reiterated that Serbia is readily open for investment in energy as well. He concluded by expressing his hope that His Majesty the King would visit Serbia in the near future. The President of Serbia, Alexander Vucic, and his accompanying delegation visited Bahrain National Museum on the sidelines of the President's official visit to Bahrain, where he was received by the Director General of the Culture and Arts at the Bahrain Authority for Culture and Antiquities, Sheikh Hala bin Muhammad Al Khalifa. The President of Serbia toured the museum and reviewed the arts from the Islamic World Exhibition. The tour included a visit to the Cemetery Hall, which narrates the history of the Dilmun Burial Hills, the Dilmun Hall, and the Traditions and Handicrafts Hall. The President of Serbia, Alexander Vucic, departed Bahrain, concluding a visit to the kingdom, during which he held talks with His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa on the close relations between the two friendly countries, as well as on regional and international developments. President Vucic was bidden farewell by the Minister of Foreign Affairs, Dr. Abdel Latif bin Rajid Zayani, Bahra Governor Salman bin Isa bin Hindi Al Manai, and senior officials.
Meanwhile, the Member of Parliament and the Chairman of the Human Rights Committee of the Arab Parliament, Alawi al-Basha, expressed his complete rejection of the European Parliament's statement on human rights in the Kingdom of Bahrain. He also strongly condemned the false information contained in this statement that serves the agenda of extremist groups targeting the security and stability of Arab countries. Al-Basha called on the European Union to respect the internationally recognized rules of parliamentary action, not to interfere in the internal affairs of Arab countries, respect their sovereignty and the nature of their societies, and the efforts they are making to strengthen the human rights system. He added that the European Parliament ignored Bahrain's rich human rights record, reflecting their deliberate approach to politicizing human rights issues. The Arab Interparliamentary Union stated that what the European Parliament claims contradicts with all democratic values, international conventions and agreements, and with all the principles with re that require full truth in what the European Parliament believes in. The AIPU called on the European Parliament to draw information on which it bases its statements from reliable official government sources based on documented evidence. It condemned the European Parliament's statement as a blatant and unjustified interference in the internal affairs of sovereign and independent states. AIPU also expressed complete rejection of the false accusations and allegations that reveal the utter ignorance of the reality of the Kingdom of Bahrain. The AIPU stressed that Bahrain is witnessing a constant peace, pace of comprehensive development in the field of human rights and respect for freedom of speech and expression. It reminds the European parliamentary the need to rely on the principle of cooperation and partnership based on trust with its Arab counterparts to exchange correct and accurate information and not to rush to issue statements based on unilateral visions as these practices lack the simplest rules of justice and professionalism. The Speaker of the Arab Parliament, Adel Asumi, paid tribute to His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, hailing his keenness on promoting peaceful coexistence and dialogue between cultures and religions. He highlighted the launch of Bahrain's Declaration for Religious Tolerance, which represents a world roadmap to consolidate religious liberties, pointing out the establishment of the King Hamad Global Center for Peaceful Coexistence. The Arab Parliament Speaker was addressing the opening session of an international conference for dialogue between religions and cultures, which was initiated by the Egyptian President Abdel al-Fattah al-Sisi. The conference aims to reach a collective regional and international roadmark to confront the discourse of hatred and extremism and to promote tolerance and dialogue. He underscored the importance of fostering the language of dialogue between religions and cultures underlying the need to engage educational, media and legislative institutions in the collective effort. He stressed the Arab Parliament's keenness on bolstering interparliamentary dialogue, praising the initiatives headed by Egypt, Saudi Arabia, Bahrain and the UAE. The National Task Force for Combating the Coronavirus held a press conference to provide an update on the Kingdom's COVID-19 response. The Under Secretary at the Ministry of Health, Dr. Walid al -Mana, Khalif al-Mana, noted that Bahrain is continuing with its mitigation efforts and stressed the importance of adhering to precautionary measures. He acknowledged that COVID-19 vaccines are a pathway to normality and highlighted the national vaccination campaign's success in working with manufacturers to make vaccines available for all citizens and residents. He noted that the Kingdom's vaccine uptake plan is evolving but remains focused on reaching vulnerable citizens at greatest risk of developing complications from COVID-19, including those over 70 and those with underlying conditions or with a BMI of 25 and above. Dr. Almana advised that the current recovery rate is 94.84% with a 0.37% death rate. Infectious disease consultant and microbiologist at the BDF Hospital, Lt. Col. Dr. Manaf al ghattani affirmed that vaccines reduce the risk of serious complications associated with COVID-19, including death, and are effective in slowing existing and new variants. He added that the Kingdom has authorized five different vaccines to accelerate immunization rates and increase availability. Consultant of Infectious and Internal Diseases at Salmani Medical Complex, Dr. Jamila Salman, reaffirmed the importance of taking precautions and carefully disclosing all information relating to contact to break the chains of infection. She urged everyone to register for vaccination, including pregnant women and breastfeeding mothers who are able to vaccinate safely. The national vaccination campaign continues to witness a wide turnout of citizens and residents. The Ministry of Health announced that 322,508 had taken the first dose of the vaccine, while 212,117 had taken the second. The ministry renewed its call for the community to commit to all precautionary measures and take the initiative to register for the coronavirus vaccination. 
The Ministry of Health said today that the number of coronavirus cases reached 6,252 with 501 recoveries, 579 registered new cases and two deaths. 213 of the new registered cases are expatriates, 354, 45 are contacts of active cases and 21 are travel related. The deceased were a 52-year-old citizen and a 59-year-old expatriate. The Ministry expresses its heartfelt condolences to the families of the deceased and urges everyone to comply with the guidelines issued by the National Task Force for Combating the Coronavirus. Virus.